This is the port of New York. To the traveler, it's a familiar, ever impressive skyline. To the newcomer, it's a symbol of hope. To the merchant, it's the biggest, busiest seaport in the world. But to others, it's a battleground. And a battle is constantly waged against illicit traffic and contraband, and against the unknown forces who deal in the most dangerous of all contraband, narcotics. On the front line in this battle is the Bureau of Customs of the United States Treasury Department. Part of its job is to check every piece of incoming baggage to see that no contraband is smuggled through. There are lots of tricks in the smuggling racket. The customs men are trained to know them all. The new ones, the old ones, and a few more. Yet despite the vigilance of these men, the flow of narcotics into the United States has never been completely checked. Government reports are full of case histories on the battle against illicit traffic in narcotics. One of the most dramatic was the one known simply as the Florentine case. The SS Florentine was approaching the port of New York on the night of June 22nd. She was a few miles out of the harbor. At 3.30 in the morning, one of the passengers appeared on B deck. Her name was Tony Cardell. docked at 10 that morning. Soon after that, her gangplank was lowered and her 832 passengers began to disembark. Among them was Tony Cardell. Like all the other passengers, Tony Cardell went through customs inspection. Her baggage was examined. There was nothing irregular in it. Her clearance was a matter of routine.
understand it, Paul. There was no reason to kill him. You told me the purser would be taken care of. You didn't say it would be with a knife in his back. Such a repulsive way of putting things, don't I also say that you look slightly ridiculous. A woman should never indulge in floor pacing as an emotional outlet. She becomes a foolish spectacle. Now, my dear, sit down and relax. Murder wasn't in the plans, Paul. Oh, I never would have gone through with it. Why did you have to kill him? You could hardly let him run loose in New York. It would have been only a question of time before they picked him up. A very bad risk. But I'm frightened, Paul. I never thought I'd be mixed up in a murder. But you are now, you know. And what do you wish me to do about it? Take me away, Paul. To Rio, like we planned, or, or someplace. Any place, just for a while, till this quiets down. That, my dear, is quite impossible. Paul, what's happened? You're not yourself. What is it? What's wrong? Darling, don't treat me like this. I've done what you wanted. Why are you acting like this? Please, darling. You must not become a nuisance. All right, Paul. If you won't take me, give me the money. I'll need at least 25,000. Are you certain that will be quite enough? You'll never miss it. Florentine shipment is worth 50 times that. Eventually, yes. It'll be some time before I sell it. But I can't wait. I've got to get away now. I was seen talking to that person. I danced with him. I had to. They're bound to find out and question me. I'm so frightened I might give the wrong answers. Yes. That's true. You might give the wrong answers. Who's that? No one to alarm you, my dear. I, uh, I put the stuff in Penn Station. It'll be picked up tonight. All right. Wait in the other room. Here's the, uh, 25 grand stash of clay. That's from all for the moment, Lenny. I thought you said you weren't selling yet. This is special. I'm going to Canada. Need cash. So do I, Paul. I'm unable to give you any more money, Tony. And this hysterical attitude of yours, I do not care for at all. Someone else while I was away, didn't you, Paul? Who is she this time? Some little waitress, cigarette girl, kid out of the gutter. You're also developing the irritating habit of not minding your own business. I'm beginning to see you now, Paul. This little whim of yours for building up a poor girl from nothing. It's purely for the pleasure you get out of throwing her back into the trash barrel. You annoy me exceedingly. Please go. I'd give anything to be around to watch your smug arrogance splatter all over the place. The day they finally lock you in a jail cell. Shortly after all her passengers had been discharged, the Florentine's cargo was unloaded. One of the items was a legitimate shipment of raw narcotics consigned to the Dale Chemical Company of New Jersey for processing for medical use. It was a bonded shipment and would have remained unopened in customs for several weeks had an alert inspector not found a discrepancy between the actual weight and the declared weight of the shipment. The inspector immediately ordered a box to be opened and instead of the consignment of narcotics vitally needed by hospitals and doctors, it was found to contain nothing but sand. The all-out alarm was sounded. The searching squad of the enforcement unit arrived immediately from customs headquarters, prepared to go over every inch of the vessel for the missing narcotic shipment. The inspector in charge conferred with the Florentine's captain. While the searching squad combed the entire ship, covering it from stem to stern, from keel to crow's nest. On learning that the ship's purser was missing, the inspector notified the supervising customs agent in charge. Within a matter of minutes, agent Michael Waters was assigned to the case and on his way. Waters' first job was to gather all available information aboard the Florentine. 
Interviewing a ship's officer, he learned that the missing purser knew the combination of the vault where the narcotics were kept. Further suspicion was thrown on him when it was discovered his personal papers were gone. Upon learning that one of the Florentine's life rafts was missing, Agent Waters requested an immediate search of the harbor. Another arm of the Treasury Department went into action. The Coast Guard sent out its cutters. A tremendous area of the port and its approaches had to be covered before the search ended. With the indication that the stolen narcotic shipment had now reached the shores of the United States, the Florentine case took on added significance. And now still another branch of the United States Treasury threw its forces into the battle. The Florentine case became a joint operation of the Customs Bureau and the Bureau of Narcotics. I might have to bring a man from Washington. I have no top agent free to handle a case this size. Well, I may be out of line, sir, but uh, what about Jim Flannery? Flannery just finished a couple of tough ones. Now I've put him on a desk job. Desk job? Somehow I can't see Jim Flannery sitting behind a desk. It was the only way I could get him to take a little rest. You two worked together before, didn't you? Yes, the um, Exeter case about two years ago. We were a lucky combination on that one. Send in Jim Flannery and Sam Harris. You feel better now, Waters? Well, I don't mind admitting it, sir. Working with Flannery is a real education. Well, this is a rough one. I hope you can crack it. Well, here's that customs man. Good to see you again, Mickey. Hi, Jim. Long time no see. Where you been hiding? Under a desk. Paper job. Duty for me. What are you up to? Well, Jim, I'm switching assignments on you. You're going on a case. Thanks. The Florentine job? It's a big haul, Jim. I know. I've seen the reports. When they process that raw stuff, they'll have over a million dollars worth of dope to spread around. And as soon as they do that, Jim, we're sunk. We've got to grab that stuff before they start peddling it. But before we can grab it, we've got to find it. We've got a job in our hands, Vicky. Well, come in, Sam. Harrison will work with you. Good. Pleasure, Jim. You know Mickey Waters? Oh, sure. Hi, Mick. Hi, Sam. The uh, Florentine case, Sam. Give them a rundown, Waters. Well, no leads except the missing person. We're no reckon on him. We're checking the passenger list and the crew now. So far, nothing there either. It doesn't give us much to go on. Except the missing person. You find him and you're in business. Let's get out the local file and give it a shake. I don't think you can crack this one that easily, Jim. Neither do I, sir, but we might find out if the shipment's still in town and if anyone has a line on the purser. Okay, Jim. It's all yours. Good. Now, Sam, let's throw out the biggest dragnet we can. Pick up all informers and pushers. That should give us a lead on this purser. Jim? We're really starting from scratch on this one. Find a guy that looks like 10,000 other guys. Yeah. Yeah. But all we're sure of is one thing. He went that away. Somewhere in this towering city, out of all these millions, find one man. Because the package this man took from the SS Florentine wasn't ordinary contraband. In that package was death. That's why a dragnet had to be thrown out over the entire city. In this package were the seeds of destruction. Bacteria to start a plague of violence and misery. Men would kill to get it. Men would die to keep it. And those who kept it would destroy themselves with it. That's why time was so important. This pestilence had to be stopped before it could spread. Then, aboard a drift collecting barge, the search ended.
Here's the passenger list, Jim, hundreds of them, and hundreds in the crew. Might be any one of them. And it might be none of them. You've got to keep checking, Mickey. Every one of them is a possibility. Come in. Mrs. Flannery, there's a woman on the phone who wants to speak to someone in charge of the Florentine case. Who is she? She wouldn't give her name. She's on, too. Flannery speaking. I understand you wanted to talk to me. How much do you pay for information on narcotic cases? Well, uh, that depends. What did you have in mind? It's about a shipment of sand. The government pays 25% of the legal value of the merchandise recovered. Why don't you come up to the office and... No, that's impossible. You meet me in half an hour on the elevated platform, Canal Street. I'm wearing a gray dress with white collar and cuffs and a gray hat. said you'd pay for information. That's why I'm here. You were going to tell me about the Florentine ship. Well, I can tell you where to find part of it. Then would I get the money right away? As soon as we have the evidence. You said uh, part of the ship. Well, I... I don't know where the rest of it is. But I can help you there, too. That is, if you... We'll pay for anything we get. Where did you... Uh, get your information? Someone I know, it, that is, there's some people I know who are involved. If I could get the money right away, you said it wouldn't be long. It's up to you. Depends upon how soon we get the evidence. You'll get that tonight. Sometime tonight. Who is this, uh, somebody you know? You'll have to tell us everything. About the rest of the shipment, names, places, everything you know. I... I'll have to get that. I need a little more time. I'll call you later, at your office. Later this afternoon. If you're afraid of anything, we can give you protection. No. No, I'm not afraid. I'll call you later. of the young lady that just came in here, do you know? No, oh, aren't you ashamed of yourself? A young fella like you should be working, not loafing. Well, I tell you, Pop, I will be working as soon as I find out who she is. Now, look, it means a lot to me. Well, now, since you put it that way, uh, her name is Tony Cardell, apartment 5A. When I was your age, I'd have found out for nothing. <laughs>
so startled, Tony. As if you never expected to see me again. I didn't expect to. But I'm glad you've come, Paul. I've never needed you quite so much. And I didn't mean a word of what I said to you before. Really, I didn't. I'm terribly sorry for it. So am I. You do forgive me, don't you, darling? Tell me, Tony. Come straight home after you left my place. Yes. Certainly. Why? Oh, I was just worried that you might have stopped somewhere on the way here. You're not making sense, Paul. It takes ten minutes to get from my apartment to yours. I phoned for an hour and a half. You weren't home. Well, I... I stopped for my railroad ticket. At the station. And you lost the ticket on the way home. No, I, I didn't get it. I... You have been most ungrateful, Tony. Most ungrateful. I wish you were coming with me, Paul. Tell me, Tony. Where are you planning on going? The West Coast. Then anywhere I can get. Come with me, Paul. Let's have it like it was before. Come with me, darling. I'm afraid I can't come with you, Tony. But I shall miss you. I'm so terribly worried, Paul. I don't know what to do. I'm worried too, Tony. Very worried about you. What do you mean? You're a frightened woman, Tony. Nervous. Lying. I'm not lying, Paul. I swear it. You're a bad risk, Tony. A very bad risk. <laughs> Treasury Department, Narcotics. Waters Customs. I'm Devers, homicide. That's the lady, all right. Your man tells me you've had her under surveillance. That's right. I relieved Mickey at one, Jim. People have been walking in and out of the building until the squad cars came. Anybody's guess is good. Who found her? The maid, when she came in to clean at 2 o'clock. Well, she can't be dead for over two hours. I tell her to the building at noon. She dead about an hour and a half, Ed. Apparently strangulation. With no finger, rope, or wire marks. Your boys find anything like a parcel of narcotics? No. He's been tearing the place to pieces looking for it. There's no junk here, Jim. Maybe your friends carted it off after they stopped the lady's breathing. Hey, Jim. Well, here's her passport. All right, you can chalk this one up to me. He had no reason to hold her. Take it, Gert. Hello? No, who's calling? Penn Railroad Reservations. Find out what it's about. I'll take the message. Six o'clock? Hold on a minute. We have a reservation for Cardell on the six o'clock train. Listen to me, Tor. This is a police investigation. Where was Miss Cardell going? I see. Thanks. You can cancel the reservation. She called up a couple of hours ago for a reservation in the six o'clock limit. Connecting with the Santa Fe in Chicago for Los Angeles. She could have blown town a lot sooner than that if she was running out on a date with you. I think she intended to keep it before she got on the train. Sam, you stick here. Give the lieutenant our story on the girl. See what his boys dig up. All right. Mickey and I are going to Penn Station. Strictly off hunch. Attention, please. Train number nine, the governor, for Newark, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington will be leaving from gate 
number seven. Snake Cardell would not be keeping her date with Agent Flannery. Now it was up to Flannery and Waters to determine what she would have done, what plan she might have had. There were no narcotics in her apartment, yet she had promised to deliver the evidence by six o'clock. If she had planned to pick it up on the way, then death had cut off the trail. If it was already here in Penn Station, then Flannery and Waters had to find it. With the help of station detectives and a set of master keys, Flannery and Waters went about the painstaking job of looking for the needle in the haystack. In the vastness of the station, it could be hidden in many places, the baggage room, the cloak rooms, the lockers. Obvious places, but they all had to be searched for the agents, as well as those in the racket, knew that the obvious place is often the safest one. Row after row of lockers was checked, and any parcel that might possibly contain narcotics had to be opened away from the eyes of the curious in the privacy of the station master's office. This is it. Seems like the pure stuff. Would you get me an envelope, please? No marks on the container, Jim. What are you going to do? Get a sample of this to our lab for a test. This is no peddler's supply. And if it's pure, you can bet it came from the top. Thanks for the use of that master key. But as far as you boys are concerned, this has never been out of the locker. Okay? Right. We've had the brakes so far, Jim. All we can do now is sit tight and see what happens. Tony Cardell put that package in there itself. Nothing's going to happen. But if she knew, they used that locker for a delivery depot. We can expect a visitor sooner or later. very much. You're a wonderful audience. I'd like to do more? So I will. Here's my favorite character. I'm Captain Bly and I'm on the bounty. Mr. Christian. Mr. Christian. Let's tell Christian come here. 
Hold up there in the clothes nest, making that vile ticking sound. Come down, I say, or I'll hang you on the highest yard arm of the English Navy. <laughs> very much. At this time, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to present our three Brazilian lovelies. Come, Come on, on, folks, let's bring, bring them out nicely. What are you doing? About time. Gee, darling, you were terrific tonight. I'm terrific every night. <laughs> Come here, you. Excuse me, I have private business. What did you do, push the package over with your nose? You'd been over an hour. Uh, what are you beefing about? You didn't say rush. That's no way to handle that hunk of junk. Who are you guys? You ain't local. Federal pitch buster. Dolly, what's happened? What are they doing? Who are you? Little Red Riding Hood. We're not playing games here. All right. I'm Lily Long. I'm a dancer here. You the girlfriend? That's what you think. I'm a good friend of his, that's all. Well, you better get some more clothes on, friend. You're going along, too. Oh, look, mister. This kid doesn't know anything about this. She's only here in the floor show. She doesn't know anything about it. We'll see. Who oh, asked you to pick up the package? Him. The order says, come here, see a Dolly Carney. Dolly's him. He give me a key, says, get a package out of locker at 10. Was the girl in the room, then? Nah. Only the character. What's in there? Stolen jewels? Sit down, Sonny. We'll send somebody back and pick you up. Dolly, don't stand for this. They can't push you around. Stay out of this, Lil. Look, she's not in this, believe me. I don't want to drag her into this. All right, we're not going to hold Miss Long. Thanks. But we may want to talk to you tomorrow, so don't plan any trips. All right. Key to room 1017, car not apartment sports. You live there, Connie? You guys are trying to frame me. I'm not in this business anymore. I was only doing a guy a favor. A guy I don't even know. You better get another story, Connie. This one sort of needs crutches. Come on, Connie. We'll have a little chat over at your place while we look it over. You guys got it all wrong. You got it all wrong. I was only doing, doing a guy a favor. Let's go, Dolly. What's the matter, Dolly? Having trouble? All he can handle, Mac. Oh, yeah? I'm Joe Leone. This is my place. I don't like cops busting in here making pinches without warrants. You boys stick to your nipping and stay out of trouble. Are you going to move that or am I? You can't push me out like this. I got no right. Joey, how can we help? What can we do? Oh, I don't know. I'm keeping out of this or I won't have any club left. We got to do something about it. Well, if you want to help him, he gave me a telephone number. Said you can call it. What are you doing to my stuff? Stop it, I say. Stop it. Stop it. I'll sue you. All right, Carney. Let's go back to the very beginning and start all over again. Two things we want to know. Who were you buying for? And who did you buy it from? You got it all wrong. So help me. You got it all wrong. Go on. Put us right on it. Well, this is how it was. A guy came down from Canada. He wanted a big load of pure junk. Let's get the small details. What's the guy's name? All right. Why should I cover for the schnook? Name's Jerems at the Chevy Chase Hotel. You're getting better. Have a cigarette. Go on, Connie. I'm interested. I told him I wasn't operating anymore. If I heard of anything, I'd let him know. And you heard of something? Just by accident. I happened to run into a guy I knew a long time ago. He told me he had 25 ounces of pure. That he wanted to sell for 25 Gs. What's this guy's name? I don't know. I don't know, so help me. A lot of pedos, you never know their name. Where did you happen to run into him? Last Wednesday, Lil and I went to the, to the ball game. Somehow I don't see you at the ball game, Carney. Try again. Why not? I'm nuts about ball games. Are you? How about boat shows, Carney? 
Two tickets to the boat show, Grand Central Palace, last Wednesday. Bad habit, Connie, saving stubs. So what? So I went to the boat show. So what? So what? So you met your Mr. No Name there? Yeah. But why at the boat show? Because I wanted to buy myself a yacht. Noble ambition, Connie. All right, Connie, move the lot. But getting back to this Mr. No Name, what does he look like? Like a lot of guys. Tall, thin. Where can tall. we find him? I don't know. I haven't seen him in years. Three, four years. I haven't, so help me. There's nothing else here, Jim. The place is clean. What did Jeff Talas have my place for? I ought to sue you. Let's go downtown, Carney. Maybe you can remember your pal from the boat show on the way. How can I remember? I never saw him. I tell you, I never saw him. I don't even know his name. Look, guys, the guy you want for Canuck, Jerems. I'll be a witness against him. Anything you say. We'll pick him up, Dolly. But the guy we want most is your pal from the boat show. Maybe you can remember his name down in my office. Leonor? Yes. I'm Stasser. I called because Joey said you could help. Maybe I can. How much do you know about this? Only what I told you on the phone. When the messenger came with the package, they followed him. Then they grabbed Dolly. That's all? That's all. We've got to get Dolly out. You said there was someone... There who... is. Have you seen him? Will he bail him out? I'll take you to him. Come along. She's out there. I don't like this. She's mixed up with Connie. I don't trust her. What are you suggesting, you? We don't know what Connie told her. She's dangerous. You will please allow me to make that decision. I made that phone call, I didn't know about you. I didn't realize Dolly had friends like... like this. I understand you are quite close, you and uh, Mr. Connick. No, he's just a good friend of mine. He got me my job at the club and... you will do something to help him, won't you? I shall certainly do everything that is necessary. Now let me pour you a drink while you tell me about yourself and our good friend, Connie. Well, I... I wanted to help him because it wasn't Dolly's fault. You see, he was just trying to do somebody a favor. He was doing it for someone else. Someone else. If you could give me some idea who it might be. I only wish I knew. You have no idea. If we could get Dolly out of jail, I might be able to make him tell me. I see. Won't you do something to help? He can't stay in jail. He can't take it. He can't. Don't you see he's not strong? If they keep him there, he'll go to pieces. It would be a pity. Will you do something? Are you going to help him? Don't worry, my dear. Don't worry. Leo, arrange for bail. We must get this Connie out as soon as possible. What about the girl? Harmless. Our concern is with your friend, Connie. Your choice of associates, Leo, is surprisingly poor. In future, for your own safety, I advise you to be more careful. Well, we're doing everything we can for your friend, Connie.
Picked up the Canadian. He denies everything. He's lying. But we can't prove anything on him. That makes you the pigeon, Dolly. It's a tough rap, Dolly. And it's all yours. He's lying. I'm not going to take the rap for anyone. Why should you, Dolly? We want the guy you got the stuff from. Who is he, Dolly? You got to let me out of here. I, I need help. I gotta get out of here. You, you can't do this to me. We're not doing it. We want the man at the head of this operation. If you happen to be in the way, it's too bad. We're waiting for you to give, Dolly. Say, darling, the rest is up to you now. Stassi. What? Leo Stassi is what I got from. Where is this Stassi? He's, he's got a bold word. Harper. Doc, go on with that story. Where's the boat place? Marine. Row. Half mile. Harbor. Point. No cheesecloth establishment. If that's a front, these boys operate on a large scale. Man, unless Connie pull that Stessa character out of a hat. That's what we've got to find out, and fast. Let's move in a little closer. Hey, Jim. Take a look at that sign. Like this tub's gonna need a few quick repairs. Look, I run her in there, stick around and work on her a while. Forget it, Mickey. It's not that simple. It's a cinch, Jim. That stuff's still in there. We gotta find out while it's still around. 
I can't let you risk your neck. You've never done any undercover work. I've learned a few tricks from the old professor. You better let me tackle this. Do you know anything about boats? Front from the rear. Yeah, you'd be great. Come on, I'll run you in. All right, Mickey. Breath? That's the boss, Mr. Sasser. Sasser, eh? Found. Look again. It's outside and down below. Oh, thank you. He's good for now and now. in the shop and supply room down below.
That's as far as I got when Laughing Boy caught up with me. you need for cutting the pure junk. These boys are sure of themselves. They do their processing right here. I guess Connie was on the level. Mr. Stasser is in the dope racket, all right. Jim. Listen. I'll check around downstairs. You cover the office here. Right. Here. Just looking for parts. You're a liar. <clears throat> Come on, let's have it. Okay, I'll tell you. I'm down here from Canada. I got fouled up in a deal. It was Dolly Carney. Carney, huh? Go on. What about him? I put up 25 grand to him. Got no stuff. He told me you guys operated out of here. <laughs> Keep talking. I like. 
I figured I could grab a bundle of your stuff. You dirty fiend! Hang on to him. Come on, let's look around. Maybe he brought some friends. outside. Get going. Uh-uh. We're taking him to the boss. This guy might want to talk some more. Sure, take me to the boss. If he's just the guy I want to see, I'll talk plenty. Okay, let's go. is going to wonder just how many pals Connie's got, how much he's told them. Everything Mickey had on him. I'll have them taken over to his folks. I'll take them. I was going to drop out there later. Sure, Jim. I can have someone else. It's all right. I'll handle it. Not much to bring them, is there? That. Three lines on page 27. Nothing about what kind of a guy he was. Not even his name. The case isn't closed, so he's an unidentified body. That's the way the road ends sometimes. It ends when we close this case. John, we've got to close this case. There's only one chance left. Wiley? It's a long shot, but I want you to let me take it. But Jim is too wild. No time for preparation, no cover story. We don't need a cover story. These people don't even know why. I don't want two men killed on this case. For you to take this Wiley's place... We don't even know who sent him, Jim. Or how much he was supposed to buy. And we'll never know that from the outside. We could nab Stasser and take a chance on finding the stuff. There are hundreds of Stassers. Grab him and another one pops up. We want the man at the top. Oh, sure. How do we know Wiley was going to deal with the top? If I'm Wiley, they'll deal the way I want them to deal. Jim, there's no time. All we know is Wiley's on his way here by plane. You could never... John, there's a million dollars worth of dope involved here. One-tenth of that is enough to start a dozen crime waves. Get more guys killed. More guys like... We've got to stop that. You've got to let me pull Wiley off that plane. Get me Morrison in San Francisco. The San Francisco Bureau went into action. If a man named Wiley made plans to leave, they would know about it. Notify all airlines and travel agencies to be on lookout for a man named Wiley. Every clerk in every office was on the alert. Every ticket purchased was under close scrutiny. And finally, when a man named Wiley was ready for a trip to New York, Agent Carey of the San Francisco Bureau was ready to go along. Chicago stopover was the break the narcotics agents needed. As soon as Wiley stepped off the plane, and before he could communicate with anyone, he walked, unsuspecting, into the custody of the authorities. And he was quietly removed to the seclusion of one of the officers. 
Okay, Wiley. We know everything about you. You're on your way to New York to buy up the Florentine ship. You can make it easy for yourself if you open up to us. No idea what you're talking about. I'm on a vacation. You have no idea how long a vacation, brother. I'm giving you a chance to shorten it. You're wasting your time and mine, too. The plane leaves in a few minutes. This is the end of the line for you, Wiley. Let's have some conversation. No comment. How are your boys doing back here? Just his clothes in the bag and a lot of phony papers. No money? No. Nope. These were supposed to be cash. Routine cards in the wallet, except for this. The bird on the right is Al Yaxi. Have been booked in Communicado. Right. Perry and I are going downtown. We've got some business. Experience and skill of the department's technicians were brought into play. And within a very short while, Flannery had completed the first step in the process of becoming Wiley. In the few minutes at his disposal, Flannery had to be briefed on the record of Al Yoxi, big shot in the West Coast narcotics ring. But in spite of all their efforts, no lead, no clues, no information available on Wiley. To make his impersonation come off, Flannery would have to play for the breaks. It was going to take luck and much more than that. Later that afternoon, when Flannery arrived at LaGuardia Field in New York, it was a man named Wiley who walked into the airport building. Associated Airways, flight 219 for Chicago and Los Angeles, now leaving at gate five. All aboard, please. You have a message for Mr. Wiley? Associated Airways, flight 19 for Los Angeles, now leaving at gate five. All aboard, please. The men of the Bureau of Narcotics kept a watchful eye on Flannery and reported the success of his first contact with the gang. Supervising agent Meredith and his men could only stand by and wait to see if Flannery could find his way, his identity undetected, to the missing shipment from the SS Florentine and signal them to close in. Until then, Flannery would have to face the risks of his dangerous impersonation alone. Miss? What? When? Why the police didn't they check with us before they released him? Dolly Carney was released this morning. He's liable to go straight to Stasa. If he sees Jim, it's all over. So help me, you guys are real pals. And you can tell whoever went Dolly Carney's bail or Dolly Carney won't forget it. They'll be glad to hear it. Thanks a lot for the lift. A lot of service. Where are you going? Up with you. Of course. Got things to talk about. This little guy's really lost up my place. How much of your guts did you just spill in the can, Blabbermouth? I didn't tell him anything, Leo. So help me. Somebody else must have fingered you, not me. You're the pal who bailed me out. He said it was a friend. He didn't say who, but I guess it was you. How much did you tell the cops? As much as you told the Canadian? I didn't tell the cops anything, Leo. What's with the Canadian?
suicide. Oh, no. No, you must be wrong. I see. I'm Stasia. Glad to meet you. You're late. Sorry. I had some arrangements I had to make on the way. Missed my connection. Al Yaxi sends his regards. We can do business now. You brought the money. I haven't seen the merchandise. I have my orders. I'm not buying air. We can do business now. Sure we can, if we see the 200 grand. We'll take the money now, Wiley. I haven't got it. Where is it? I haven't got it with me. You think I'm that stupid? You think I want to wind up the way that purser did? It's a double cross. I'll take you to the money as soon as I see the head man. How do you know you're not talking to the head man? I only know what I've been told. Yoxy had nothing whatsoever about that in the letter. Not in the letter, naturally. I've got my orders. I deal with the top or I don't deal. Keep them here. Sit down. And headquarters of the enforcement unit, the men of the Bureau waited for the prearranged signal from Flannery. Until it came, they could do nothing. Yet they knew that his situation must be growing more dangerous with every passing moment. You're being very difficult, Mr. Wiley. Think I'd come here with 200 grand on me? Man could get hurt that way. Man can get hurt many ways. To be crude about it. You have seen the merchandise? I want to see the money. It'll be here in 15 minutes, after I make a phone call. A phone call? To whom? The money was sent to our contact in town. I have to call him as soon as I'm satisfied that the deal's on the level. This wasn't mentioned to me. We're supposed to bring the cash with him. Would you have brought it? 
We'll play this your way for a while. But if this is a trick, you and your friends will regret it, Mr. Wiley. Where's the phone? On the dock. Just a minute. Ike? What number do you call? Call this number. Tell them to send the money in a box by uniformed messenger to the Brooklyn Municipal Pier. We'll be there in 40 minutes. Brooklyn Municipal Pier, 40 minutes. Why not have it brought here? A public pier is the most unlikely place for strong arm tactics. You guys got sore because we were so cautious. Hello? I'm calling for Wiley. All right. Brooklyn Municipal Pier. Okay. Tell Wiley it'll be there. I just got a message from Flannery. Brooklyn Municipal Pier. 40 minutes. Okay, Sam. Let's get started. Says the money will be there. We'll shove off immediately. Right away. Uh, put the stuff in Mr. Wiley's bag. If everything goes well, we'll put you ashore at the pier. Somebody to see you. Cut the matter in due course and, uh, oh, well, Little Red Riding Hood. Hello. This is a pleasure. You two know each other? Yes, we met through a mutual friend. What, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just a uh, business associate. Mr. Wiley and I have a little business matter to discuss. Do you mind? It won't be a moment. Lovely girl, our friend. Yes. Little Red Riding Hood. You seem to know her better than I do. Uh, I've known her a few months. I met her on my last trip in. A few months? You do have an advantage over me. You seem rather upset over seeing your friend, Mr. Wiley. It's only that I was so surprised. I can hardly blame you. He tells me he hasn't seen you in several years. I'll join you in a minute, Mr. Wiley. Lenny, please prepare some drinks. When we reach the bay, head out for the open sea. Before we keep that appointment, there are a few matters to be straightened out. We should have been here by now. I think we're in for trouble. Let me have that phone. 23, over. Meredith is speaking. The art hasn't shown. Call Coast Guard and request an immediate search.
interesting, isn't it? Now that we're all here together, that you two should have known each other before. Now, tell me, when is it you said you met? It Here's is... one maybe you can answer. We should have been at the pier by now. What's holding us up? You wouldn't be changing the subject, would you, Mr. Wiley? You said 40 minutes. What about it? Very good question. What about it? Don't seem to be enjoying our cruise, my dear. Let Lenny pour you another drink. No. No, thanks. There are searchlights out there. Coming up behind us. Lenny? Take the girl out of the way. The stateroom. Come on. Boy, what are you doing? Let go of me. Don't be stupid. It's for your own safety. My own safety? This is Dolly's ring. You killed him. You're murderers. Take her away. And you, Mr. Wiley, or whatever your name is, if you hadn't arrested Dolly, they never would have killed him. Arrested him? Hold him here. You and Lenny tie him up. Mr. Wiley is leaving the boat. We shall miss him. Because we shall miss this. Because we'll want things to be in order when our guests arrive. With the capture of its top man, the smuggling ring was smashed. The Florentine case was closed. There would be new problems, new assignments. The facts and figures of the case were filed away. But there are things that cannot be part of an official government report. Part of the story of the man who stand guard at America's front door, the Port of New York.